What is up, you beautiful happy hustlers out there? Kerry Jack here, and I hope you're having an amazing day. I mean, it just enjoying this very moment right here and right now, baby. And in this episode of the Happy Hustle Podcast, we have um, Miss Tracy Demek, who is one of Australia's most trusted and sought after spiritual mentors and psychic mediums. And as a mentor and author of Who the Fuck Am I? <laughs> Love that title. Healer and spiritual teacher, she is dedicated to guiding others in embracing their authentic and spiritual self to access an extraordinary life. Now, she has been featured in Daily Mail, OK Magazine, Marie Cl Clarie, uh, Lorna Jane, and she really just impresses and inspires her spiritual insight and passion in ambitious courage to help others. She's also studied and worked with Tony Robbins and Gabby Bernstein, and she's just connected and committed to becoming your secret weapon to fulfillment. And in this episode of the Happy Hustle Podcast, we talk all about how to tap in to your true self, your true soul, and how to actually achieve fulfillment. So buckle up, share this with a friend who might need to tap into their soul. And, uh, they'll get some value and I bet you will too. So without further ado, y'all, let's dive into this episode of the Happy Hustle Podcast. And real quick, guys, I just want to give a huge shout out to this episode's sponsor, Newtopia, who is making my favorite nootropics in the market. Now, let me tell you, these things help optimize brain function, focus, mental clarity, verbal recall, the list goes on and on. You guys get the hookup for listening and watching the Happy Hustle podcast. Go to newtopia.com forward slash happy hustle. Save yourself some bucks on the world domination box. Nine different nootropic formulas that really will make a difference. If you use your money or you use your brain to make money, you got to check these out. Newtopia.com forward slash happy hustle. Now let's get back to this episode. What? All right, Tracy Demek, welcome to the Happy Hustle podcast, my friend. I am excited to connect. Me too, Carrie. Thank you so much for having me. First of all, your accent is just delightful to listen to. So I, I knew we were going to have um, just an amazing episode for that reason alone. Plus, you know, you are one of Australia's most sought after and trusted spiritual mentors and psychic mediums. And I'm just really mm -hmm. excited to tap into my own intuitive intelligence and how the happy hustlers can also do the same. And I'd love to, you know, dive deep down this rabbit hole. But before we do, I want to ask you a question, Tracy. What is something interesting about yourself that not too many people know? Well, not too many people know that I've been able to speak to dead people since as long as I can remember. Uh, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people see spiritual teachers as, you know, um, going through a spiritual journey and maybe learning from lots of different gurus uh, and regurgitating a lot of information information uh most of my myself comes from being able to see and understand spirits for my whole entire life um and most people assume that that's not the case but it is and that i'm afraid of ghosts mm, wow which is that, not expected no you would think you would just like kind of become friends with uh ghosts in the afterlife since you have had this gift since birth Tell us a little bit about your backstory and kind of how, how'd you even find out that you could um, communicate with people who have passed on in this life and, and, and just give us a little history and how, what got you into all of this? Yeah, well, I never, I thought everyone was the same way as me. And it wasn't until I got into high school that um, I started to realize that not everyone just knew how I was feeling or what I was thinking or what was going on. Not everyone was getting information like I was getting. And I felt quite rejected. And I didn't understand that it was because I was experiencing the world in a very different way. Um, and I got into the whole typical teenage you know wanting to be a witch and thinking I'm different and it was I'm the age of the craft the original craft movie and 
it was all very um, fun and exciting. But what I, what my friends didn't really know was that for me, it was feeling like home. And so I went on a little bit of a, an inner journey of connecting to mother earth and spirit and really understanding what it's like to have these, a spiritual being having a human experience. Um, but then I, um, so I had an interesting childhood and by the age of 19, I was diagnosed with um, clinical depression and alcoholism at the age of 19. Oh. Um, and I was trying to numb some serious trauma from my childhood. Uh, and that numbing really shut down all of my, my intuitive intelligence, my, uh, my ability to be able to communicate and understand. And uh, I fell pregnant when I was 23. And everything mm. shut down again. And because I couldn't drink at that stage, everything shut down. And I had never actually realized how loud everything was until it was gone. Mm. And I had a contrast and I was able to just realize that, wow, who turned the lights off? Who turned the sound off? Where is the energy? It was all gone. And I don't know what it is about being pregnant that stops that. But for me, it did. And it was the first time, the first 10 months of my life where, where I, I was just surviving on Tracy rather than this, this external help and support that I hadn't realized I had. So it was kind of like taking it away and then realizing, Hey, now I realize what I had. Um, and then I had a profound experience uh, at the age of 26 when our second child was born, he was born dead. Um, and he was brought to life after his birth. And um, during that, that very quick period of time during his labor, uh, I did a bit of a deal with the devil, so to speak. And, and I, <laughs> I, I don't believe in the devil, but it's, you know, it's that bunny is saying. Yeah. Um, and I just did a deal with the devil that if he was going to go, that I wanted to go too. And that mm. if he was going to stay, then I wanted to stay too. And when they finally put him on my chest and he started to suckle in and, and I finally heard him cry and he started to get his colour, um, I heard a voice say, um, he's here to do great things and he's a teacher. And I've, I never really knew what it meant um, in terms of um, what he was going to be teaching. And I was 26. I was just a baby. Mm -hmm. And I'd just been through this massive trauma. And then as he grew... Um, he uh, suffers with an autoimmune disease called alopecia. And mm. at the age of five, he started to lose all of his hair. And then by the age of 10, he's completely hair free. So no eyelashes, no eyebrows, completely bald. Mm. And he's, uh, he's 13 now and he's like a six foot giant. He's, he's crazy. <laughs> he's got genes of a superstar. I don't know where he got it from. Um, <laughs> but at the age of nine, he tried to commit suicide because he was bullied so bad. Mm. And um, at that point, I had a reckoning with myself that was, I was, I was an alcoholic. I'd started back into my alcoholism after my kids had been born. Um, and I was taking, I was addicted to codeine uh, to numb physical pain that I was experiencing. Mm. And I had this reckoning with the day that I found my nine-year-old trying to kill himself and I thought this was all on me. What kind of a mother am I? And it was all about mm. me. It was me, 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 me. I'm the one that's created this. I'm not a good enough mom. It's all because of me. And I failed to see him in his own power and his own soul journey and what he's here to do. And at that point, I heard another voice, which was you need to focus on you to spiritually parent this child, not to humanly parent this child. So I went mm. on a very quick, deep dive and started to connect back into my spiritual self. And through my own connection with my intuitive intelligence, I was able to help him connect to his intuitive intelligence. And so together, it's been a bit of a, of a ride, a bit of a journey. Um, but I felt that that was, and that's just one, what I call divine intervention, where I wasn't going to choose to do it for myself. I had always had this awareness of knowing that there was other powers that be and these forces and sources that were affecting my life that made me live this seemingly great life on the outside but it was terrible on the inside and it was time to stop abusing it it was time to stop taking it for granted and it was time to connect to it to really respect it and when mm. I started to respect it 
it completely catapulted me in a different direction. So I'm a visual merchandiser by trade um, and um, it's, it's my jam. I love it. I was really freaking good at it. Um, but after that, at the, you know, five years ago, at that point, it took me on a completely different traje- trajectory. And I started to make deals with, with the powers that be instead of the powers below um, mm. And when I made the powers that be my my source and my force to, to push me forward, um, I realized that I was moving at exponential speed, that abundance was coming to me in like, mat, like it was just the, the quickest turnaround. Mm. Um, and I started to really give it the respect that it needed. And now I have like a, you know, a, an abundance an abundance in life that I could never have imagined just five years ago. It, mm. it just working with that intelligence source and incorporating it into all of the emotional intelligence, the physical intelligence, the mental intelligence, bringing that intelligence um, from the intuitive aspect just brought it to her, this holistic space that has allowed me to now serve the world. And my, my light is seen by the world rather than just my son or myself. Mm, wow. I mean, powerful, powerful journey. And, you know, I want to unpack a couple of things that resonated with me. Mm-hmm. You know, first of all, I think I get caught up with this stuff too. And I'm sure the happy hustlers can relate where you think it's all about you, like, like how you thought it was about you, but it really wasn't about you. It was about your son and what he was going through. And sometimes we take it personal, you know, one of the four agreements, um, you know, is don't take it personal, you know, don't take things personal, but yet I feel like we can really go down the rabbit hole of anxiety, stress, depression, when we take things personal and it really can affect us on a, on a deep level. So I love that you said you had to get out of, you know, this whole concept of making it about you, but make it about him and how you can have that divine intervention and with your spiritual self, not necessarily with your human self. So that was really interesting to me. And then, you know, you, you now transitioned to really just going full on like spiritual mentor and going into this psychic medium realm. And I'm curious, what does that look like? Well, like now, what, what does it look like for um, your business? I know you have a podcast. I know you have a book and you do coaching, but kind of walk us through like how you now serve clients and, and a little bit of like your framework, like how, yeah. how people start to work with you and then what they experience as a result. Yeah. Great question. So essentially I help people unpack their ego um, so a Tracyism, which thanks to Clubhouse has now become a thing. It's a Tracyism, um, <laughs> which is check yourself before you wreck yourself. Love it. um, it's really about understanding that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. At the age of four, when the part of our brain starts to form that understands risk assessment, um, that's when our ego kicks in. And our ego is a gift. And e- our ego is a tool that's given to us in our human experience to keep us alive, like literally to keep us alive. So lions and tigers and bears kind of alive. Whereas over time, humans have developed that front part of their brain to, to protect themselves from emotions and thoughts and and. Um, experiences that they just don't want to experience. So it's like we've become oversensitive to, uh, to or our ego, I should say, has become oversensitive to protecting us from things that might be a threat to something that we see as certain. So what I like to do is help people understand that, first of all, you're going to have to put aside any biases you've got of me being able to speak to dead people and me being able to receive information from higher sources and just trust the process. Just trust me. And that's through social proof, really. I can't really like give any other, you know, it's just my, I walk my talk and, and the, the results speak for themselves. But mm-hmm. what I've, what I see is, I've always been able to see people's half of path of their highest good, the path they're on, and then the gap. 
And I try, Mm. and over the years, I've perfected how to close people's gap. So I am left brain, right brain. I am spiritual and as as business minded and as logical and science minded as 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 anybody other person is, any other entrepreneur. So for me, the first thing that I do is help people identify first of all that there is a gap. Through developing trust of being able to say, I can see that you've got this because I can read eyes. So I look into people's eyes and I can I can get them in the first 10 minutes of them to be able to go, wow, she really knows what's going on inside of me. How does she do that? It's mm. not me. It's your guides that are telling my guides and I am just the messenger. It's my jam. Yeah. It's what it's my X factor. It's just my 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 thing. I don't care. It's not about me, but they're going to make it about me first. So let's get it away from me and the the fun stuff of it. And let's just get down to that ego. Now our ego is going to respond in fight, flight and freeze. And it is what's keeping that gap there Mm. because you are fighting from it or you are flighting from it or you are freezing from it. So first of all, we identify which one you like to sit in. And then you have to identify as an entrepreneur, as, you know, as someone who sees themselves as a leader or an action taker, or maybe quite in their masculine most of the time, you, you have to acknowledge that we have to step into that feminine energy for a second. And I'm sure your listeners and yourself know that masculine feminine isn't gender orientated. Like I'm quite masculine at my core in mm-hmm. terms of that energy anyway. But we have to acknowledge that, first of all, we need to step into that feminine where we're going to be allowed to be vulnerable. Mm. Um, and then once we are at that vulnerable state, we recognize that we're actually in survival mode. Now to tell an entrepreneur that they're in survival is like, no, I am not. You don't know who I am. You're misunderstanding me. You don't get it. Yeah. 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 So first of all, it's understanding that these are places where you're in your survival mode. And then we figure out you can't just go from survive to thrive straight away. There is still that threat of that lion and that tiger and bear lurking, right? They can still yeah. smell you. They're st- it's still got you, whatever that is. So we just have to choose a different, a different survival mechanism until we can, it's safe to come out and then we kick off thriving. So we have to, we have to give that ego, that space to detach and to say, right, Carrie, I'm your ego and I've been protecting you from all of these things that you have told me to protect you from since you were really little, whether it is rejection, whether it is um, self-worth. And so if, if you've from a really young age have experienced rejection or maybe you, you put yourself out there and someone turned around and said, no, you can't have that because you're from the ghetto or whatever it is. And so it's something that is imprinted on you. Um, then you'll go and it hurts. You feel misunderstood. You feel sad or you feel lonely. Then you're going to tell your ego, you're programming it from a really young age. Please don't allow me to feel rejected and lonely and unworthy ever again. So then your style is either going to be fight against those people that tell you that and you're going to be really loud and and passionate and Mm. sometimes angry. It depends on where you sit and how self-aware you are or you're going to flight from it, which means that you're not going to put yourself out there and take risks, which most entrepreneurs aren't really flighters. Um, Or you're going to freeze, which is where you're not going to do anything about it and you're just going to take your lot in life and just take that imprint and be branded. So most entrepreneurs are fighters. So first of all, we realize that where are you fighting? Recognize that you're holding a frequency inside of you that is like a term deposit. It has been Mm. banked in there for a really long time, which means you're locking up a percentage of your frequency that I want you to understand that if you unlock it, that percentage is like rocket fuel Mm. because you're getting back, say, 20% of your energy that you've never lived with. You don't know what it's like to have that 20% back. So we take it from ego. We take it to a neutral where you can feel it and you can't, there's no shortcuts through this. It's a spiritual process. You have to sit with yourself and you have to take it through the chakras, up through the root chakra, sacral, solar, heart chakra, throat, and then into that third eye where we then receive our intuitive intelligence. For the first time, are we Mm. actually able to acknowledge it as outside of us, as intuitive, but then you're also in a space where you can start to learn the language of the intuition. So I teach people that intuition is like English and then, or it's like Spanish. 
And so under the intuition is all the different dialects, mm. all the different little nuances, all the different little um, the, the accents that we have for English, like the Aussie accent, the Montana accent, all those different accents that you've got that give you an identification. And those, those dialects are the psychic abilities, which every human being has because we are all from the same source, which is spirit. We all know how to speak that language, except our ego has kept us vibrating too low to allow us to recognize it. So mm. we unpack the ego. We, we sit in being able to recognize that for the first time that we're going to embrace that intuitive intelligence. And then we learn how to read, how to acknowledge and read and understand, interpret and apply that intuitive intelligence. Mm. Wow. Wow. I mean, that was a lot. And I, I really, <laughs> I love it. I, I mean, but I'm like my mind's spinning. And first of all, I can't stop thinking about like, oh, she's reading my eyes. I wonder what she's thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking that. And I'm like, oh man, because uh, we're doing a video interview for all you watching on YouTube. And I was like, wow, she's in my head. Ah, you know, but, but I mean, it's awesome. Like that's your gift. And we all have an ego, you know, and I think some people, and I know I was in this boat, like I put my ego as an enemy for far too long. And really your ego is your amigo in a lot of situations, right? Like it really is your friend, but your yeah. best friend. Yeah. Your best friend. Like it's there to protect you. It's there to help you, to guide you, to um, facilitate your growth. However, you have to be able to unlock it. And that's what Tracy's talking about is tapping into your intuitive intelligence and to really step into your full power. It's a spiritual process in order to get there. But when you get there, you're unleashing like another 20% beyond of energy that's possible. 100%. And that ego starts to become another Tracyism, your door bitch. <laughs> you know and it's the door bitch your e or your your bouncer whatever you want to call it like your e like and, and i'm not against being a door bitch i was a door bitch is how i met my husband i was door bitch, the chick you at mean the door bouncer or you mean yes okay so, so like door bitch it's such a derogatory term but in australia <laughs> a door bitch is the the chick that stands next to the bouncer or the girl that stands next to the the male bouncer at a door of a nightclub that the bouncer is going to take care of the security issues but the female is going to decide whether or not you can come in hmm. he's like the host Oh, okay. Now, okay. So now I get it. Yes. I definitely know a couple door bitches in my day. And I definitely know a couple bouncers that, you know, yeah. keep the riffraff out. And that's what, Correct. that's what your ego does. You know, it, it does. Says, uh -uh, this is an energy vampire. You don't want this in your inner circle, you know, keep it moving. And, and 100%. That's, yeah. That's a, I like it, that Tracyism. <laughs> yeah. And it also, what it does is when you identify what it is that, so we all have a soul. I mean, we can't argue that. And depending on your way or train of belief system and whatever it is, and I work with people, I've worked with Muslims. I, I work with every single, you know, mainstream religion that there is because faith is faith. As far as I'm concerned, if you have faith, we're friends. Yeah. Like to believe in faith and, and to believe that there are, that, that, that you are not the, the stop, that you're not the be all and end all as a human, then we're really, we're, we're friends, no matter who you are and what, where you come from. Mm -hmm. But when you start to realize that your ego is there literally to only keep your human self alive and you can use it in your favor to say, okay, I've got a soul and it's here to expand. We're here to expand. We're here to be a full expression of whatever the force or source is, whether you believe in God or Allah or Buddha, whatever it is, we are an expression of that oneness. And mm -hmm. how are you expressing it? And entrepreneurs, we like to express as much as possible. We are go-getters, achievers. We want to fill that space. Mm. But how much more can you feel that space? How much deeper can your roots go or your anchor go in all those spaces if you're actually also using your intuitive intelligence 
to to expand in not only what Carrie as a human wants, but what the oneness wants you to do as well. Mm. And so when you recognize the repeat patterns, where maybe as an entrepreneur, you keep getting blocked with investors. So maybe you're looking for an investor to come in and you're trying to get someone to invest in this thing that you know is going to change the world or at least change the world for some people, whatever it is. We all want to be the changers and, and the, you know, those people that, that create something that is the next thing. Mm-hmm. And we've, we've all got that service mentality as well about us, us entrepreneurs. And so if you've got that, then when you bring in the intuitive intelligence into it, if you say, okay, why are people not seeing the value of what this is and why won't people invest? Mm-hmm. What you're getting is the sole lesson of rejection. And so if we look back in time in your life, say for the last 35 years, probably back until you're about seven is where I like to go, you would have told your ego to protect me from acceptance. So this is a bit of a mind a, a mind bend, so stick with me. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're, basically your sole lesson, whatever you're being given that feels like a problem or feels like a mountain that you've got to climb or a persistent thing that just keeps hitting you and hitting you and hitting you, it's because you're not learning the sole lesson and the universe is just using whatever you're giving it to try and teach you the sole lesson. So at your core, how you're feeling is rejected and the universe is rejecting, 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 rejecting through whatever it is. It might be love. It might be investors. It it might be your body rejecting you, whatever it is. It's just rejection. So if your soul needs to learn the opposite, so ultimately you're rejecting yourself and what you need to do is accept yourself for the universe to be able to bring you opportunities for other people to accept. Hmm. Makes sense. So yeah. what happens is your ego would be trying to protect you from rejection by just getting angry and frustrated. And maybe at the point where you're just like, I'm going to give up because it's too hard. And then you're angry and resentful. Yeah. Or you keep fighting. And before you know it, what you're fighting for is not your creation and your service, but what you're fighting for is just to be able to win or just to be able to be heard and seen. And so Hmm. when you sit back and you're like, okay, if I bring the intuitive intelligence into it, what I need to do is the opposite. So I need to recognize that if I want acceptance externally, then I have to learn how to accept myself. Income employment of ego door bitch that says, you're not allowed to let anyone in that's going to um, tempt me to fight against accepting myself. So while I'm sitting over here trying to work on accepting myself, You can't let anyone in that's just going to go, well, don't do that. You're fine. You're perfect the way that you are. You're an entrepreneur. Mm. Get up. Don't you know who you are? Get up and keep fighting. Keep moving on. Mm. It's going to hurt you in the long run. You're you're, you're pushing shit up a hill. You know, you're you're burning energy really fast and you're going to burn out. But if you sit back and you're like, okay, hang on a second. What I need to do is just this foundational work where if I step back and I see what the universe is giving me, I need to do the opposite to get the opposite. So the opposite of rejection is acceptance. Am I accepting myself? Have I accepted that I'm actually worthy of stepping into this next thing? Like once I get these investors and my my service or my product or my whatever it is, is running, am I real? Do I really think I can do that? Mm. Like, do I really think I'm worthy of happy hustling do I really think I'm worthy of sitting in that space with that abundance with that all of that opportunity am I going to be able to support that and sustain that and the universe is telling you no be careful what you wish for you're gonna get it and you're gonna lose it as quick as it came because you Mm -hmm. haven't done the foundational work if you accept who you are then when you get to the other side and you see that it's just another challenge it's another goalpost that's going to move once you've reached that goalpost of I've got the investors and now I've got to move on to the next one. You're going to see another ladder of things that you're going to have to achieve. And if you don't have acceptance at that point, then you're going to be your own undoing and you're going to blame it on everybody else and everything else and all the circumstances. 
Mm. But if you go in there and you accept that you're not a perfect person, that you don't have the perfect answer, that you've never done this before, that you're learning on the fly and that you've got your intuitive intelligence in tap, then there are no obstacles. Everything is seen as an opportunity at that point. Mind, Does mind that blown. make sense? Mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> Explosion inside this hairy brain of mine. Um, Yo, people are probably going to have to listen to it a few times to really yeah, get their mind around it. I think I'm going to too, because I'm like, try it. I'm here when you, so it's just interesting because I have faced a ton of rejection in my life, um, specifically in the entertainment world. You know, like I've been an actor and a model for 15 plus years. I know I don't look at now more like a caveman, but back in my prime, you know, I was doing the thing, right? And, and the business of acting and modeling is essentially going on job interviews, aka auditions every single day. And at any given point in the entertainment industry, there's a 97% unemployment rate, meaning only 3% of talent is actually working on any given day, which means there's a ton of rejection, you know? And so when you say rejection, I had to make friends with rejection, with just the, the concept of rejection. And I just accepted it as feedback, you know, but I wasn't always that way. Like I, there was a long time where I was like, why, why me? Why don't they like me? You know, but then when I started just being unapologetically myself and just bring in what I call my fuck it bucket, which I learned from my improv teacher in second city, which I would just bring my fuck it bucket and I would dump it all over. It stage. almost sounds like a Tracyism. <laughs> you, you can have it. Um, just give me credit once and then it's yours. For I will. Life. Okay. Sure. Um, but I would dump it on, you know, the casting room or whatever stage or whatever audition. And I would just be my unapologetic self. I would, I would love myself for whatever, you know, I could find a reason to love myself, like just for showing up sometimes, you know, even though I didn't want to. And, and I think that mindset shift was a catalyst in my success. And, and I'm still on my journey, you know, growing my success, but I just, that's what came up for me. And I could be way off here, but like the acceptance of just, Hey, I just have to accept myself for who I am, love myself. And then, you know, you can't give from an empty cup. You hear that all the time, but you have to give yourself that love first. So I hope that kind of ties it together for the happy hustlers out there, at least how it related for me, you know, cause yeah. Tracy, like she's so deep. She's so intuitive. We're, we're playing catch up here, me included, all the happy hustlers. But, you know, it's really awesome to kind of learn and, and dive into each of these concepts. Now, I, I am curious real quick, if it's OK, Tracy, do you have something you want to dive in? You have a follow up nope. or OK, so good. I'm curious, like you you talk about your spirit and, and like one of the things that really attracted uh, me to you was how you connect individuals with their true spirit their essence and how you can interpret and actually apply your spirit to help you thrive in your life walk us through like how all the happy hustlers out there listening maybe they're hearing you tracy and they're like mm, i i like tracy because she's no bs she's a straight shooter when it comes to this woo woo spiritual space but like how do i actually apply this like how do i actually mm -hmm. you know tap into my spirit do you have any like tips or tools or or tactics or exercises that like the happy hustlers right now listening and watching can can do to really like tap into their spirit Absolutely. So um, in Zenith, which is my, um, my sort of signature program, mm -hmm. I teach what's called sacred spaces. And so this is, this is perfect. So sacred spaces works on what are you worshiping in your life? You know, where have you got sacred spaces in your life? So for example, um, my sacred spaces go in this order. Vitality is my number one sacred space because yes, we're a spiritual being having a human experience, but we're here to experience the human. So vitality, looking after your physical, mental, emotional health at the top. So what are you doing inside of the physical stuff, the mental stuff and the emotional stuff? Mm. Because I once drove past a, um, we have the Salvation Army here. Do you have that over we there? We have that, yep. Yeah, so we've got one that's near me and they have like a signboard and they're really clever with what they put up there to capture people's attention. And I drove past one day a few years ago and it said, 
feeling disconnected from God, dot, 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 who moved. And I thought that that just captured perfectly what it is that I try and teach. So if you're feeling like you're doing this alone, which a lot of entrepreneurs do feel like they're doing it alone, and it's like it's all on us. And we, mm-hmm. we secretly like it, right? <laughs> yeah. So imagine when you actually realize that you've actually got this source up there that is, is, is like going to pick you up and carry you and together you're going to be a force for reckoning. You have to understand that that lower physical element, the earth element, the human aspect to us vibrates low. And so in order to tap into that intuitive intelligence, we have to raise our vibration. There's two parts to this. There's the consciousness and the vibration. So our consciousness is really just about getting in with the right conversations and expanding our consciousness, you know, expanding the concepts and the theories around universal laws and all that kind of stuff. But then there's the vibrational frequency of the human form. So to tap into your intuitive intelligence, the first thing that you have to do is in sacred space, number one of vitality is figure out how to raise your freaking vibe, how to raise your actual human vibration. Amen. So to do that, you know, like you're, you're a life hacker and a biohacker and you like, you're the man for, for your listeners to be able to figure out how to do that, how to raise your vibe. But this is, you've got to think about everything that mother earth has provided like we don't need to create things to raise our vibe we are given that already and it comes from mother earth so reconnecting with nature doing the earthing so not grounding but earthing so mm-hmm. connecting uh, for 30 minutes and i don't know if you've already covered that in one of your episodes or no go with ahead. Your biohacking yeah. so skin to earth um so we have positive negative and um neutral ions going on inside of us and so when the when the neutral of free radicals connect to positive or negative it just promotes more positive or more negative which if you've got negative and you've got negative behavioral and vitality practices or no vitality practices then you're going to be someone that's full of disease or illness or fatigue or whatever Whereas the earth has a slightly negative charge. So mother earth comes with this perfect harmonizer for us. We just have to learn to get skin to earth. And so if we do that for a minimum of 30 minutes at a time, the earth is naturally harmonizing our system for us. So you should definitely do something on earthing, Carrie, and give it to your listeners because it's incredible. It's a huge... I was in, I got, I was so fortunate one day to be in Who Magazine and with Gwyneth Paltrow talking about earthing and it was incredible. It was just like, holy moly, I can't believe my life right now. But getting amongst nature and really seeing that mother nature is a spiritual source and there is spiritual access there, she will raise your vibe. She will do that for you. But to be very specific, what I want everyone to think about is the four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. These are all things that Mother Earth comes with in in, in a system, like in a basic structure, a basic mm-hmm. form. Every day you need to think about your energy restoring just like the sun does every time it goes to sleep and wakes up and the moon comes out and it reprieves the sunlight. So we have to think about our physical body like that too. So I want everyone to think about cleansing, grounding and protecting their energy every single night before you go to bed. So you can cleanse it. I cleanse it with water or you can cleanse it with fire, or you can cleanse it with earth. You can do whatever you want, but you must think about cleansing this physical body every time you end the day. And we want to cleanse it of what's not ours, because a lot of the time we're holding on to a frequency that's got nothing to do with us. We're holding on to mm. the frequency of the media, of what's going on with everyone around us, with the, yep. with the suffering of the earth. And then you want to be able to also cleanse what no longer serves you. So if you're doing the inner work that entrepreneurs must do to be successful and to sustain their success, you need to be able to have moments of self-awareness every day. So you want to wash away things that don't serve you anymore, limiting beliefs, old habits and behaviors that you're up-leveling and choosing a new standard. And then you have to ground your energy in. So you have to make that conscious and deliberate and intentional, which I'm huge on, conscious, deliberate, intentional, is is life. If you apply those three words to your life in a conscious, deliberate, intentional way, you're a happy hustler before you know it. Mm -hmm. But you need to ground your energy in and just go, you know what? I am not just here as a human self. I am tethered to earth and I am tethered 
to the spirit. And I am making that conscious decision to recognize that I am one with earth and one with my source. So we want to ground our energy in with that oneness. And we want to recognize that as much as us entrepreneurs love to think that we are the be all and end all of the makers and the doers (laughs) and and that that the whole world is on our shoulders and we secretly like it. It's yep. not the case Yeah. to start recognizing that when you bring up the mother earth, up your roots and into your body, you're going to be rocket fuel again. Yeah. So true. And then we protect and we have to protect our energy for not, for what's not for our highest good. And I mean, that gets way off into the spiritual part of it, but ultimately you need to raise your vibe in order to meet your intuitive intelligence halfway. Hmm. And then from there, we go down to the next sacred space for me is spirituality. So every single day, yes, that cleansing, grounding and protection is a bit of a spiritual practice and a sacred practice, but it's really more about making sure that my physical body is primed and open to be able to hop back into place where I can receive that that connection to that intuitive intelligence. And the, the spiritual place is where I practice Um, well, I, I will, it is a practice. It's a continuing practice, but I'm just really good at it. So I don't really (laughs) practice it. I just do it. But in that spiritual practice, it's where we give spirit an opportunity to say, how can I understand you more? And that's when we look at the psychic abilities, which is where I might lose some of your listeners and I don't want to, but if you can think about it just as a language, it's just your intuition language and learning how to be fluent in it. Yeah. And so their practices like listening to to things that are far away and close up and listening to sub like subtext and listening to the undercurrent of what people are saying and what's happening rather than just listening to the surface and they're things like standing next to someone and thinking can I can I intuitively understand how this person's feeling and am I making it my feeling am I becoming them through a feeling or a thought And at what point am I conscious, deliberate and intentional about whether this is actually mine or not? And am I moving in a direction that is for me or for you? Mm. Wow. And yeah, that was great. I mean, if you, if you want to keep spitting hot fire on the mic, have at it. I just felt like interjecting just to recap a little bit of what resonated with me again, Mm -hmm. you know, grounding, earthing tapping into Pachamama, you know, our beautiful mother earth, like that that is such a huge part of being a happy hustler. It's the 10th alignment, nature connection. Um, I don't feel more at peace, more whole than when I'm in nature, you know, like there's no other place than when I'm walk around barefoot in the wilderness, you know, or sitting butt next to a campfire, you know, or and do you in find that of water? Do you find that it is when you are in your flow state and your ideas come, your inspiration comes, your motivation comes, and oh, yeah. it's happening in that flow state. And the, the reason why you achieve that is because you're tapping in, you're grounding, you're yeah. you're allowing Mother Earth's wisdom and intelligence seep into you. And then it comes into that human space where it is hum- it's intuitive intelligence. We're able to understand it. There are no shortcuts to be able yeah. to get to be a happy hustler. There's none. And, and your book, you, you have to follow the steps. You, you, and you have to do them every day. It's like a muscle. You, you'll lose yeah. the strength if you don't train it. Yeah. It's a choice, but it's a standard. And so like with Zenith, I started off with everyone and I'm like, you've got a high standard for yourself already. I can see it in your success or I can see it in your drive and your passion and your desire to do whatever it is that that person wants to do. But let me tell you how it can be you not burning as much energy. Like I can, you can go further faster with more grace. If you, if you just come back and incorporate the intuitive intelligence and it happened, like you've got the universal law of compound. So momentum happens so freaking quickly. Yeah, it does. So you see it quickly and the proof is in the pudding, right? Like when you get results with something, it makes you want to keep doing it. When you get, when you, when you start a diet and you start to lose weight, then you're like, okay, cool. This gives you more motivation to keep going. When you start a new exercise routine and you start to see your body sculpting and changing, you're like, cool, this works. I'm going to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. And so spirituality doesn't make you wait. 
Your source does not make you wait. It's just how quickly you want to develop that faith muscle. Mm. And, and when you, when, when people think about spirituality, they're like, Oh fuck, that's a lot of work, man. Seriously. I don't want to <laughs> yeah. have to do the work. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Meditating, Me either. Uh, being in my own like self space. Yeah. yeah. Scary. Correct. I didn't want to do it either. That's one of the reasons why I kept shutting down the voices and the spirit connection that I had because I didn't want to do the work. Mm. And the work seems fluffy and the work seems, you know, wooey and the work seems like the only way to do it is that way. The way I do it, there is zero fluff. It is very practical. It is very right brain. It is very, let's get shit done. Let's move, let's identify it. Let's reframe it. Let's hold it so it serves us, not so it hurts us. Let's see how it's happening for us and move the fuck on out of that space that we've just been in as quick as possible. Mm. There's no yeah. fluff, no woo, and it doesn't have to be done that way. That's just a new age misconception and stereotype that I know I'm not the only one at the forefront of it, but it is there. And you guys, your list, your listeners, they're the they're the the future. They're they're creating our future, and our future is going towards that fifth dimensional level of consciousness. You can't get there without intuitive intelligence. If you think you're going in that direction. You're about to get a massive divine intervention, my friend, where intuitive intelligence is going to go, you can't go there without us. And you can mm. either at this point as an entrepreneur, we know what it's like to be pushed against a wall sometimes. I know what it's like to prefer to have the choice to, to want to do something as opposed to be forced to do something. None of us like being forced to do something we don't want to do. So right here, right now, I'm pretty sure that everyone that's listening to this episode of your podcast is hearing it as a bit of a wake up call to just go, this is the universe saying to you, hey, dude, if you really want to go where you want to go, I'm telling you, you have to take me with you. Mm. And right now I'm making it a choice, but it's going to get to the point in the not too distant future. We've all seen, we're all seeing it move pretty rapidly right now in the not too distant future. It's going to be a, a, like not a choice. It's going to be forced on you and you're going to be forced to make a decision. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it's a great point. And you know what I find interesting is at least most of the high performers that I know um, and the ones that I see, you know, on TV or, you know, the ones that the I celebrity see from ones. sports. Yeah, the celebrity ones, like they all give glory to God in some- 100% in some way, shape or form, they give glory to God when they do something notable, when they do something that helped others, when they do something that was heroic, or when they like, I just think of the Tyson Fury, uh, Deontay Wilder boxing match. I don't know if you watch it, but like the first thing Tyson Fury said was he thanked his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and then gave glory to God. And, and it's just, you have to look at all these high performers who are achieving amazing things and wonder, okay, am I giving glory to God or am I just focused on myself and where, you know, I'm, I'm succeeding. Like, because when you get out of your own self, um, you know, circular economy and you start look at the global picture of what's really happening in the universe, uh, it's powerful when you can look outside of yourself and tap into that intuitive intelligence. And I don't know that that's kind of what came up for me there when you were talking about it. And it's, it's just important to realize now you have a choice to take, you know, this with you, this let Tracy's message be the spiritual wake up that potentially you need it. Or if it, if it's something you're ready on that journey and you're bringing this intelligence with you, dive deeper into it. And so I think that's Correct. been a beautiful reminder for me. And I really appreciate it, Tracy. And, you know, one thing I always like to ask my happy hustlers um, as guests a question, and this is, you know, a little bit off topic, but uh, I'm curious, what, what was your first hustle? The first thing you did for money, Tracy? I was 12. So I wanted to make my own money. I've been Miss Independent from day dot. Um, I was 12 and I worked in a pharmacy um, nice. merchandising their stock. Oh, all right. That was, that was my That's first cool. hustle. And I, that money meant so much independence to me because I grew up like on the poverty line. Mm. And so to be able to do that, it, um, it 
it really empowered me and and then and it was illegal for me to do that at the age of 12 like we in Australia we can't work until we're 14 and nine months legally Mm. and so this was cash in hand and that cash meant meant that I had a way to to um a way to fund my dreams a way to fund Miss Independent Mm. um And I've been an investor over time, a huge investor in myself along the way, but I didn't realize that until I got a much older and in hindsight just went, damn girl, you did good at 12. You did (laughs) really, really good. Um, And it paid off later on, but at the time I didn't know. And obviously that was a spiritual thing that was happening. And I had that, that force sort of steering me in a direction that was, you know, the hands that I didn't see at the time. Yeah. Um, but I've always worked. I can't not work. Work is 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 a, a huge part of who I am, as with all entrepreneurs. And it's really funny because just sitting there listening to you say um, about like in sports where they're like, you know, praise God, and that's the first thing they do, or they kiss the ground, Mother Earth, or you know, they they do the prayer hands and they do mm-hmm. some kind of acknowledgement. And it might only just be a visual thing. And if you're lucky enough to catch it, you'll see it. Yeah. When you asked me on the outset, what's something that most people don't know about me? Did you know that I'm actually, um, well, I've been on pause, but I competed in natural bodybuilding competitions. Really? I didn't know yeah. that. Oh, yes. wow. <laughs> so I feel like that might be a better one and it might help your listeners understand that there is this holistic awareness to someone like me and I'm exactly like you, exactly except all I've done that's made me go further faster and have me speaking on international stages and having access to people like you and to, to Gwyneth Paltrow and to, and to Tony Robbins, you know, like I've shared the mic with him and all of these things have happened in my life and they did not start happening until I embraced that intuitive intelligence. Like it is like tapping into a miracle. It is so incredible. And when you understand the value of it, you bet your ass. It's the first thing that I thank every day, right before you press live, I shuffled my deck and I asked the card to come to the front. And I said my mantra, which is my connection, which is the same thing. Every time I connect with a client or in a podcast and interview anyone guides of the highest truth and compassion, please work through me so that I can best serve myself and Carrie and his audience today. Mm. Love that. I'm, I'm recognizing that this isn't me. This whole thing is not me. What I'm doing is preaching in a way. What I'm doing is sharing the message, the good message, you know, like Amen. all of that. Amen. <laughs> but I grew up atheist. Oh, interesting. You know, I grew up with no religion. I was the one that would invite every one of every religion into my house and pick their brains about faith. I wanted this faith. Hmm. I'm like, what is this faith? Where do you get that from? But you only get it from yourself. I didn't want blind faith. I was not going to just go, oh yeah, that sounds like a great story. I'm jumping on that bandwagon. I've created my own sense of faith. Me too. And my fear. Yeah. And that faith is an entrepreneurial type of faith. Yeah. Well, and I think that's so, it's such a great distinction. Just, I want to touch on it. You know, you don't have to have a cookie cutter religion that you follow in order to have faith. You can create your own connection with your creator, you know, and that's what I do. I pray every day. You know, I, I believe in a higher power. My dad's Catholic. My mom's Jewish. You know, I'm, I'm Jewish. I always say, <laughs> you know, um, and, and like, I know these religions just from growing up and splitting time in both the synagogue and the, and the Catholic church just on the surface. But I created my own relationship with my creator. And, and I just think that's what Tracy's talking about here is create your own relationship with this intuitive intelligence and do so today, you know, don't mm-hmm. wait because it, it really can change your life. And now, Tracy, I do want to ask you a couple of what I like to call happy hustle hacks. Then we'll jump into the rapid fire round and then we will wrap this up. And in terms of a happy hustle hack, I like to ask in in a couple of different disciplines. First being health. I didn't know you were a natural bodybuilder. Now I'm really curious uh, what's your response going to be to this. But do you have a happy hustle hack, maybe a tip, a tool, a tactic, something that you do to keep you in, you know, peak mental and physical, you know, shape? Yeah. So I do what's called a chakra stretch, like outside of what a normal answer would be in terms of physical and everything. I do a chakra stretch. So um, I have an autoimmune disease, which is pain 
Um, so basically whenever my body Pain, experiences any kind of Yes. Yeah, oh. So whenever my body experiences any kind of inflammation, my body is like a drama queen and inflammation just goes overdrive and I'll swell up like Michelin man. Oh, wow. And um, it, it's a really hard thing to get back down to come back from. So I'm all about prevention over recovery. Like I, I prep over recovery. So my life is spent prepping. So on a Sunday, I call it a sacred Sunday. It can be any day that you have where you can make it a sacred day. And on that sacred Sunday, I only do things that raise my vibe, that fill my cup, that bring bring um, like a, a an abundance to my energy so that I can prep my energy for the week ahead as opposed to recover from my energy the week that was. So the first mm. thing that I will do most days, but I spend more time on a Sunday doing is a chakra stretch. So I literally unfold my body as I wake up. And so I go into like, while I'm laying in bed still, I roll onto my belly and then I sit back into child's pose. And I imagine the color red filling up my root chakra, which is just below the tailbone. And I give myself that moment of connecting and grounding to my source, to my oneness, to my human body, to bring my spirit. Because when we wake up in that first few moments, we are still connected to the divine. We're still connected to our higher self. So I want to make the most of that point. And I bring it in and I bring all of it all the way down into my human system, that lower energy center. And I massage it in my mind with this beautiful blood red river that just flows in a clockwise direction. And then I sit up and I put my hand on my sort of my lower abdomen under my belly button. And it's my sacral area, which is responsible for our trust and our intimacy. So this is where I ask the divine to allow me to be intimate with myself and to trust myself and to be able to know where my ego is trying to take control and where I can put my ego aside and say, it's okay, I've got this, be the door bitch, guard the door while I do this today. <laughs> and I don't even know what's coming up in the day some days, especially as an entrepreneur, every day is kind of different. But yeah. um, I just make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm bringing my spirit into my physical body and that I'm recognizing that my intention is to deliberately work together with it. And then I move up mm. to my solar, which is who I am. So please let my identity externally reflect my identity internally. And please close that gap today and help me close that gap if there is a gap. And, and I just speak to myself like I would to a friend. Yeah. And then I put my hand on my heart space. And here, what I do is I breathe in white light or golden light. And then when I breathe out, I um, exhale green light, which is the heart chakra. But then next time I breathe in, I breathe past my cage. So past my physical body. And I breathe out as far as I possibly can. Sometimes I get it to coat the entire planet Earth. Sometimes it goes beyond planet Earth. It just depends on where you can get your brain to go. Mm. But I just continue this breathing into the heart space and out of the heart space until I recognize and I feel satisfied that I am back into the oneness and that my physical being as Tracy is just part of the oneness, part of the collective. And then I'll usually put my hands on my throat, which is the throat chakra. And I just say, please help me to speak my truth today. Please help me to guide others to speak their truth today. And then that's it. Oh, just that? So, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that only takes about two yeah. minutes. It really no, does. I, I know. I love it. It's great. I mean, it's like what the spiritual Sunday is something that I find sacred as well. You know, really recapping what went right this past week. You know, what should I start doing? What should I stop doing? What should I keep doing? You know, going through that, that chakra stretch like tracy mentioned that's super interesting to me and i hope you guys try it you know and if nothing else just do a little reflection a little journaling a little gratitude spend time with yourself on that sunday and, and just kind of check in so that that's awesome that's a great happy hustle hack now i am curious about money because I know there's a lot of broke spiritual mentors out there, you know, and you're not one of them, <laughs> which is, nope. which is really awesome to me, you know, and I'm curious, like, do you have a happy hustle hack regarding money or maybe like something you do to save or invest or spend wisely or accrue more wealth? Mm -hmm. So I recognize that I'm an expert in my niche. 
and that there are people who are experts in their niche. So I look to people who have got proven track record with money, but do it authentically and have the same ethos that I have behind money, which is money is just a frequency. Money is mm. just a money is just a a, 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 a currency that um, that only applies to you if you let it apply to you. So I have no attachment. I am non-attached to money. And when you have zero attachment to the, the frequency of money, it just seems to multiply really fucking quickly. But what you do do is recognize that other people who do have an attachment to money, this is their jam and they know how to multiply it quickly. And if I have zero attachment and I know I'm connecting to someone who also has zero attachment but has worked out the mechanics of multiplying that currency that the other humans in the world like I speak about people as humans generally because I don't know what I am but I I I know I'm not fully human it's weird um (laughs) but it's it's about recognizing that I've worked out the secret like the the methodology and the mechanics behind how you very quickly tap into intuitive intelligence how you keep it how you employ it and how you move further faster with it there are people who have got the same non-attachment but they've worked out the mechanics and the secret and the methodology behind how to multiply just this currency that exists out there like how we multiply you're a biohacker right so it's how I multiply the ability to be able to have my body respond the way that we want it to respond to and to for longevity and vitality. You've worked out the methodology, the secret, the, the, the theory behind it and, and practices to, to make it happen. Right. So there are people that have done that too. So my tip is to just always find someone who has the same um, respect or the same uh, attachment or non-attachment to money that you do. And if you can get to that non-attachment place with currency, that's the number one, but then find someone who has the same ethos to you around money, but that money is their jam. Money is what they've worked out the tips to. Mm. So um, I am just about to start crypto um, with my husband and I. It's it's finally time to, to sort of join that cryptocurrency mm. ride and bandwagon. Um, but who I'm going to are people that you won't see on social media, you know, saying, hey, come and join my crypto club and come and do this. I'm looking at billionaires who have zero attachment to money because they've worked out that's not what makes you happy. They've got enough of it. And they're just like, damn, I'm, I'm lonely or yeah. damn, I'm bored. Damn, I'm unfulfilled. I want to go to those people who have worked out how to fulfill themselves and just see currency as a currency. And so now they're giving their, their, their smarts away. Mm. And so I pay, I invest in access to those people to understand how they're, how they've gone further faster with their, with their currency or a currency that we have on offer as humans, Yeah. but detaching from money. I mean, I'm sure you would have, you understand the universal laws, right? And when we, when there's two things we can't tell the universe when we're manifesting and one of them is how, and the other one is when. And so if you're going to tell the universe, I want a million dollars in my bank by December 31st, you shot yourself in the foot. Hmm. You can have that million dollars tomorrow. It's just that the way that you think you're going to get it is by fighting for it. Hmm. Who said you had to fight for it? You could get it by grace and ease. Yeah. And so I see money as just another thing that comes to me with grace and ease, just like friendship does, just like connection does, just like opportunity does. Money just comes to me with grace and ease because I have zero attachment, but Mm. I'm smart with my money. So I will put it in the hands of people who have got the secret. Yeah, I love that. Money comes to me with grace and ease. You know, I do some money meditations um, personally and, you know, and I'd like to manifest my subconscious reality, you know, before it becomes my true uh, human reality Mm -hmm. and, you know, go through that process, but there are universal laws and you have to be detached from the result or when or how it's going to happen. Something that, you know, was really interesting for, for me is when I do go into you know, my meditations or my manifestations or just my affirmations of, you know, who I am, I do my best to feel it, you know, like you have to feel what the, 
what the result that you're seeking when you're speaking into existence. If I say I am the world's greatest happy hustler, which I say every day, twice a day, um, you know, like I feel that, you know, like that is something that I just feel. I'm like, no one is more of a happy hustler than me, you know, like, like I just got to feel it. And so it's just detaching yourself from the result of money, knowing that it is a frequency, it is a tool, it's a currency, um, but it doesn't necessarily make you happy. Um, I love that point because really, truly happiness comes from within and, um, you know, it, well, it's, fulfillment. Yeah. And or mm -hmm. fulfillment. So yeah, that's amazing. Well, one thing that you're saying um, when you said, you know, that you say it, I'm, a, I'm the world's greatest happy hustler. Um, and then you feel it. This is exactly the point of being able to unlock that rocket fuel. So let's discover well, not right now, but what it is with Zenith, for example, is discovering what frequencies you've got sitting in there that you're ignoring, that mm. is that is sending out messages to the universe that says, you know what, I don't feel good enough or I've got rejection in there. So the universe is always going to be whacking you with rejection, but let's unlock that and, and free it so the universe won't knock you with rejection anymore because we can acknowledge those feelings we can get there especially us people who like to spend time in that visualization process and that manifesting process we're great at connecting the thoughts to the feelings and and all of that visual side of things and that formula but what you've got to pay attention to is what you're manifesting into your life that you don't want out of the frequency that is still sitting there that you're just not bringing to the surface because it doesn't feel good to do it mm. Yeah. So you could be, you could be sitting there going, I'm the world's greatest happy hustler and feeling it and loving it. But then for the, you do that twice a day, but then for the other 13 hours of your waking day or whatever that you're doing, what you might actually be bringing to the surface and sending out into the universe is this feeling of I'm not good enough, or this feeling of why does this have to be so hard? Or this feeling of I'm, ne I'm never going to get past this block, or is anyone ever going to believe in me or what I'm doing? Mm, yeah. I want to focus on that. Yeah, that's true. That is, I mean, it is, it's a good point. Like, what are you doing with the other hours of your day? <laughs> because that's what's actually manifest. That's the consistent part. That's yeah. the consistent. So what have you got consistently inside your 99.99% of frequency that we've got? And let's clear house. Yeah. Let's obliterate no. all of that stuff that's sitting in there in a term deposit. You want to talk about currency. This is your wildest currency that you have, the most effective currency that you've got. Mm -hmm. And you're just letting it sit there. Yeah. No, it's, it's true. It's ridiculous. Yeah, no, you're right. Well, where can people go, um, Tracy? Like we have talked a lot about Zenith and uh, I want to at least give the Happy Hustlers an opportunity to connect with you. Maybe if they want to connect with you on a deeper you know, level, maybe they just want to read your book. Maybe they just want to hear your podcast. Where can people go to find out more about you? And if they did want to take that next step, what, it, what, what does it look like? Yeah, it's all over on my website. So it's very simple, just tracydimmick.com.au because I'm an Aussie. So .com.au, yeah. So it's just my name. Um, and you'll find everything on there that you that you could need. And there's so many different options of working with me as well. Um, Zenith okay. is just the best for, for entrepreneurs um, and for people that want to get further faster. It's just the quickest way there. You know what it's like to invest in the people that can get you further faster. You can go for 10 years doing it yourself or you can do it in 10 weeks. It's up to you. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. So there you guys go, tracydemeck.com.au. And then if you want to check out Zenith, it's forward slash Z-E-N-I-T-H. Mm -hmm. And then Tracy, I do want to run you through the rapid fire round and then we'll wrap this up. This is basically where I just ask you random questions. You answer honestly. Is, first is it that normal to, to be nervous? Uh, yes, <laughs> very. All right. Are you ready? Ready. Okay. First question. Favorite food. Go. Potatoes. Potato. Oh, no. His favorite book. My book. Who the fuck favorite am movie? I? <laughs> um, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. Oh, nice. What's your spirit animal? Al. Oh, that's good. I was really curious what you're going to say. Best business advice. Um, only work with people who are in their authenticity. Mm, love that. If you had a billboard with the last piece of content that you were ever going to share with the world, what does that billboard read? It's 
it's not about you. Mm. If you had a superpower other than what you already have, because you actually do have superpowers, uh, what would that superpower be? Fly. Nice. And three things you're most grateful for right now. Uh, my husband. Sitting here, right here, right now in this present moment with you. I'm always grateful for the present moment because I've created it at some point and so have you. Um, and my faith. Love it. Tracy, you crushed that rapid fire round. I just want to take a moment to acknowledge you. Thank you so much for just sharing your love, your light, your wisdom with me and the happy hustlers. And it's just really, it's been a joy and an honor and a mind blowing journey just to get to know you more. <laughs> and, you know, I really am excited to dive deeper into your work. And I hope the happy hustlers got a ton of value from this. Um, but I just want to say thank you. So um, thank you, Terry. You. I yeah. appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate you too. And I appreciate your listeners, you know, just at least giving it a go and maybe listening to it a few times and letting it sink in because I promise you it, it's the key. It's the missing piece. Oh, love that. Now, final question, Tracy, mm -hmm. what does happy hustling mean to you? To me, it means that in my present moment, I feel free. Mm. It means that I've created a life where in this present moment, I feel free. I don't feel restricted. I don't feel scared. I don't feel in fear. I don't feel attached. I just feel free. Wow. Love that. Mic drop. Tracy Demek, everyone. Thanks for watching and listening. We out. Peace and love.